All right, we are back. It's been about 20 minutes. My stuff is doing its job. In fact, I just scraped off this little corner right here with my putty knife. Now that took off the entire, I don't know how many coats of varnish are on there. We put, we put on an interior like this, um, we'll put three or four coats on there. Uh, we want a tough build. You're paying money to have this refinished. Um, if I'm doing somebody's front door, uh, the back of the can uh, recommends three coats of spar varnish. Most people only apply two because they don't read the can. Um, all our proposals are for five clear coats of uh, Old Master's spar varnish exterior. Now this is inside, so we're going to use um, a polyurethane on here. Uh, it's the same thing you probably use on steps because this is probably going to get abused, you know, and you're not trying to, you know, mess it up, but let's face it, it's an island, you know, you're going to use it. So anyway, that's what it looks like. I'll grab my putty knife, I'll see. Let me do this. But you just kind of scrape it off. And you can see, you know, it's doing its job. Well, sometimes you've got to give it more than, you know, 20 minutes, sometimes less. Depends. So, I think I'm going to try to scrape on this and see what happens. The six inch blade. Now here's the deal about scraping woodwork like this. That stripper will soften that wood. All right. And it's real. Okay. Um, I just wasted about seven minutes on a video that ended up being two minutes long. So you guys miss what I've done, but and you can see how it's drying up. So I'll spend couple of seconds and then get to it but I've already scraped this first third um, once and got rid of the old stuff that's in my pan right there that's the nasty stuff and then I applied um, another coat on here not as liberally uh, you can see where it's drying out it's only been about 10 minutes but uh, after I got that first coat on there there was a little bit of residue and I'll show it to you over here but uh, that was coming up, but this is probably gonna take two coats every section, so I'm gonna hit it here twice, there twice, and at the end, twice. Um, second time around, or I'm sorry, the second third of this, um, that's its first coat. It's on there pretty heavy. You can see we got a little bit of drying out, it looks like, but it's okay for now. It's not, you know, you just don't wanna let it um, completely dry. So that's pretty heavy over there as opposed to over here because this is the second time around. So I'm going to scrape that and hopefully that's the last time, um, you know, that's all we have to do. Uh, tomorrow we'll sand it. So I'm going to try to scrape that and not shut the camera off again. You guys missed a great, well not a great, but thought it was a decent video and I think I set it up just like I'm doing now and then I press the record button again which is actually the stop button so you you can see what I've done at least that's what I think happened so you basically missed me putting all of this into I was talking about the importance of knifing this down okay it's real easy to gouge the wood because it's softened up with this stripper Okay, and it's it's prone if you if you're not careful, it's real easy to jab into the wood. Okay, and most mistakes, if not all, can be fixed, and you won't even notice. Um, you try not to do it. Something like this, it's in a bit better shape than a say a, a front door. Um, that I'll be refinishing. Um, sometimes you do catch the wood because it's a, you know it could be a you know a, like an old door, uh, so the grain's pretty easy to catch, as opposed to what we've got going on here. I want to say this is mahogany, but I am no carpenter. I'm kind of going past. So I'm scraping into this, and the first time around I was peeling up 
uh, the residue and the way it was coming up, it led me to believe, and you can see I'm doing it here again, that just kind of falls off. It's almost a powder, a wet powder or something. Um, that leads me to believe that the old varnish was a waterborne. Uh, oil base tends to crackle up. Um, and when you scrape it off, it's, it's like in sheets, you know, it kind of sticks together. Um, so uh, this is probably a waterborne varnish, whoever put it on there. We're going to be using oil base. I only work with oils when it comes to restoration. Um, they have come a long way uh, with waterborne stains and uh, waterborne uh, clear coats, poly, you name it. And certainly if you've got a problem with VOCs, um, the stinky stuff, uh, go ahead and use it. I'm not putting it down or anything. I'm just, I've been using the same materials. Um, I know what they're capable of. I'm comfortable with them. Um, and I'm always willing to try something new, but uh, you know, I'm kind of, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Now I have switched. I used to use oil-based glazes when I did faux finishing, um, some decorative finishing. And uh, uh, I did switch to using waterborne glazes for that, um, so I'm not opposed. It's just uh, those are so much easier to work with. So anyway, I'm scraping here. Um, I don't know if this will be the last time I have to put strip on here. It's certainly still peeling up. I'm taking it easy. I'm going to scrub on here with the steel wool and see what it does. You know, you, you can sit there and be stripping forever sometimes. And then all you need is some steel wool and it takes a last of the residue right up. So let's see what happens. piece of steel wool and kind of just give me a little piece. I don't want to screw up the whole pad by doing this because you'll start going through a lot of steel wool that way and you don't need to. So I'm hitting this and it seems to be taking off any residue of the old varnish. You know, uh, sometimes you just got to keep going over it. And so if I can get this to a point where I know the sander can take off any, you know, anything that remains tomorrow, um, I'll do that, you know, and that's looking for that, uh, that's practice, you know. So sometimes if you're doing this at home, you're doing this for the first time, maybe hit it again because um, you don't want any problems down the line. You don't want to say, I'm done stripping, and then you come tomorrow and try to sand this, and you realize, whoa, there's way too much material on here. I'm either going to be sanding forever, which leaves you open to putting ruts in their, their, their you know, in this case, their island, because you're trying to press down and fix your mistakes from yesterday. That's going to screw you. Um, so, if you're not sure, put another coat of stripper on there, you know. I can tell from here that I think this is going to get it. This is going to be stained the same color. Looks to me like a dark mahogany. Um, so I'm not looking to get, you know, bleach blonde wood out of this, and I never will anyway. Uh, it's mahogany being mahogany, it's red by nature, so. Now, I was speaking earlier about getting close to the sink, or the, the plumbing, and it probably would have been a good idea to wrap that whole thing in plastic, you know. Uh, certainly, if I would have saw somebody else doing that, I might say, hey, I'd feel more comfortable if you had plastic, but um, I'm going to be careful around it. 
which <sighs> famous last words. No, I'm just gonna. I don't need to do a whole lot around there. Um, whatever I do need to do, I was saying earlier that you guys probably didn't catch. Um, I just bumped that stripper close enough because it soaks into the wood. So it, maybe a sixteenth of an inch that stripper will actually affect the wood next to it, even though it's not directly upon it. It might soak in and leach a little bit next door. So when I push that stripper up here, um, I'm just kind of nudging it by that tape. I'm not jabbing it in there, uh, trying to, you know, actively get it, you know, soaking wet or anything. So I'm gonna come across my edges. I've got this profile over here that doesn't allow me to scrape anything, but um, I'll take steel wool, something like that. And I've already scraped these edges. Again, the video that nobody's ever going to see because it wasn't filming. Um, I've already scraped these edges very carefully like I've scraped this top. So I'm not going to scrape them again, but I will get, I'll use my steel wool to get that off of there. And this kind of, I'm not looking to scrub the stuff, I'm looking to remove it. I'll save the scrubbing for a different piece of steel wool. You know, I'm, I'm not looking to change the world here on this. This part of the, you know, removal of the, the old varnish. And we're going to get some of that stain out of there too, but I'm not, you know, it's going to be quite, by the time this has been washed and neutralized at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's going to dry pretty, pretty light. So it's going to be nice. So I can tell, I, I think it was within this video, I can tell that I'm doing, I, I don't have to apply any more stripper here to anything that I've already hit twice. I'm able to take up with my steel wool whatever's left, okay? And then after it dries tomorrow, the sander um, is gonna take off, you know, it's gonna, smooth everything down of course um, you always want to sand afterwards because you're going to raise the grain anytime you get wood wet and at the end of the day stripper is getting this wood wet um, it's going to raise the grain so you're going to have to sand regardless i don't know why anybody would want to skip that but Show you guys the top of this and I'm going with the grain I think I mentioned that earlier and I'm just scrubbing this stuff the, the residue that's on here it's not completely dry it's almost like a pasty wax that's why this steel wool does a great job at grabbing it you know as opposed to scraping it you're, when you scrape it you're not getting down in there and if you are you're probably going to screw up the woodwork if you're pressing too hard so the steel wool will grab anything that's still on there and just you're almost sanding it right off you know flip your flip your pad every once in a while and eventually you're going to chunk it for a cleaner piece of steel wool which you know Get the most out you can out of your piece of steel wool. Or else you're gonna go through it like crazy. Okay, we're coming to the end here. And I suggest staying with going with the grain. You know, I know when I scraped, I would go against the grain, but um, that's doing it carefully. Sometimes you have to, but when it comes to this, because you're actually putting scratches in, into the wood, you know, it's nothing that sanding is not going to take care of, but I don't want to go across.
across the burning. see it but this is turning in some dust up here and it's real easy to go crazy and knock that dust all over the place don't make a mess all right I'm gonna go a little bit over in my second third here since I took my knife over here anyway Yeah, see, it's almost like a wax. Let's dump this. Yeah, there we go. See, a, a clean piece of steel wool. It's kind of like, yeah. Now, I'll go over the same area. Again, I'm trying to make sure I don't have any problems on the next step. All right, if you run it, if you don't get this varnish off, you know, sanding only does so much. It's not a cure for, you know, not getting it done right the first time because you're going to run into problems. I mentioned earlier, some people will just sit there and try to sand that, sand it out instead of saying, all right, I screwed up. I got to get back into stripping. Um, now I'm, I'm behind one day, uh, including dry times. Um, so they'll try to sand it off, trying to save the day. Mm-mm, don't do it, don't do it. I'd rather be a day behind and try and sand off old varnish when I know dang well that uh, it's too thick to be sanded off. You know, that's why you just, just start over. Well, you're not even starting over, you know, you just got to take off your residue or whatever you should have got the first time. It's a pain in the butt, but, um, hey. Do it right the first time. You know, you can't always get things 100% the first time around, but try for it, you know. If you try for it, that minimizes, uh, you know, the go-backs that you have to do, not what just stripping with anything. Um, you know, go backs don't pay. And, you know, back in the day, new construction, they probably still do. They had something called a punch list at the end of the, at the end of the job, new construction, you know, you get a house painted. Punch list would be huge. I don't do punch lists, you know? I don't, I try not to leave myself something I have to do later. That's a list that can get out of hand real quick. It feels like you're spinning your wheels, you know. So, let's do that. All right. This is looking pretty good over here. I think I'm going to shut down, concentrate on getting the rest of this off, and when I get to that third section, I'll bring you guys back. And we'll see. I'll show you what this looks like real quick though. Ooh, cross All right. All right. This is what I'm looking for. All right. Um, you can see the dust this creates, but this little steel wool here, this little ball, you know, I'll just keep going up and down with the grain and I don't want to burn into one spot. You know, this right now looks a little lighter. Um, a lot of times uh, you can do that if you scrub too hard in one spot. I mean, the sander's going to even everything out, so don't get too freaked out about it uh, if that happens. You know, it does mean you're getting the material off there, so that's a good thing. But, and also I guess like here on the end, and that's mostly dirt, but a lot of times, you know, I have to do this little end like this, up and down, just on the ends. And then I'm gonna kind of wanna blend that in, because where I stop scrubbing with this, coming from this way, and then this way, sometimes you can leave a lap mark, believe it or not, just the way you sand it. So I like to, you know, make sure I 
overlap where I've started and stopped sanding. Because it's real hard to sand this whole entire area and get all the way to the edge. You, fall, you know, you get as close as you can and then you fine tune everything, you know, your corners and all that good stuff. So, all right, so I'm going to tackle the rest of this. I'll bring you back when we're on that last third.